Uh, I see many issues have been raised, and some questions were uh, raised during the presentations. So I will try to cover what I can remember, and you can remind me what I've left out. At first and foremost, of course, I want to give our solidarity to the people of Palestine. <coughs> uh, we feel very much uh, bad what is happening there. Uh, those people are oppressed. Those people, I think uh, the world at large, have not done ju justice. Okay. They have not done justice to the people of Palestine. A lot of theories have been thrown which confuse people, like uh, Comrade Mapena have said. But I wanted to address, uh, to say something in the presence of the program director. So I will come to the issue of sanctions when he's here. He have raised a good number of questions when he was talking about sanctions and when he commented about the triple C, the winning of the triple C and the something which sound like the contradictions in the triple C uh, on elections. <coughs> Maybe perhaps let me just quickly uh, respond uh, directly to the questions raised first by uh, Mr. Mbezi. Uh, you talked about uh, the teams like the Mandla system, the Pachedu, I think those who, yeah, who say, who used to say that before the elections that are uh, this time uh, we got Zampiev, uh, they won't be able to rig. Uh, it's unfortunate that they also relied on our polling agents, uh, on the information that we uh, collected from uh, the constituencies, the was. So, uh, in terms of uh, polling agencies, even though we managed to put uh, all the polling agencies, but most of them were discarded by ZANPF, the fuzzy system, the fuzzy, uh, in far remote areas where you would need people to take care of, I mean, uh, for security. It was not easy in our, in our remote areas to protect uh, uh, some of our polling agencies. So yes, some of the information uh, in terms of V11 were not uh, properly collected. But the one that we managed to collect, they still produce results which shows that we, we won. We were more better than uh, ED. Even the one that was suppressed. You would also understand that uh, why uh, some information were not properly recorded. Uh, that even some observers uh, who were uh, part of uh, collecting information, uh, who, whom people like Pachedu and, uh, and, and this uh, Manda system. They were also relying on those people. They, they were harassed, and they, their gadgets, uh, they were taken. And uh, that's how uh, the, 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 the IT system of these guys could not uh, collect everything conclusively and uh, come up with scientific uh, conclusions. But however, <laughs> we must also know uh, that the ZAN-PF, uh, the ZEC itself, did not uh, uh, publicize all the results of the V11. So they, they only, you know, it's like someone who works on a mathematical uh, question, problem. You just come and give the answer. You don't show how you came to the answer. And in fact, they even removed quickly from their website their results when they were pressured by the people at large to say, but you, you, you claimed these numbers, can you substantiate? They quickly removed everything. And we all know that ZANPF, they rule by iron. Uh, they are like a, they are a military a deep state the government of ED, the military deep state, like um, uh, Mr. Mabena have, have, have indicated. So, the other issue again on that, the other issue again, is that, uh, yes, 
we have we have the results we know what has happened but how will it help help us if we, even if we pursue that route we did pursue that route during 2018 we went to the courts we know what malawa did so uh, through you know consultation with the other uh, people stakeholders in the country uh, we realize that it is a futile exercise to go on and try to prove uh, to ZEC and the ZANPF government uh, what we have uh, achieved. It was still going to be cooked one way or another. So we decided to say no, let's keep it this way, let's fight for, uh, uh, let's pressure the international community, let's pressure our SADC region, let's also pressure our AU uh, to look at what happened uh, during the flawed process. So it was not going to help us to, to focus on, uh, on figures. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mabena. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it's a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Comrade Mabena, <clears throat> uh, I know you are ideologically, you know, uh, enshrined and uh, trained so much, and uh, I respect that. But um, when you were giving your your explanation, uh, when you stated that uh, uh, because we have a deep state and you cannot remove uh, a government of military deep state through elections. I followed very uh, attentively. I wanted to hear the solution, the proper way of, of getting out of it. But I started to lose your confidence when you, you, you tell us about the uh, class consciousness, about uh, how the uh, mass uh, economic de de development must be done, and uh, uh, the, uh, and you tell us that all the election, all the uh, in the end negotiations are important. <coughs> we end up, we end up with the negotiating, <coughs> and uh, uh, I, then it reminded me where the patriots words that you, you you speak very sweet sounding words, <laughs> but uh, in reality they. <laughs> There's nothing really tangible in terms of solution to that. <coughs> uh, you know very well that uh, even if we are going to take guns and say let's fight, uh, the region, the political landscape in the region would not support you. There won't be any regional solidarity in terms of violence. Violence is a condemned thing at the moment. We will not succeed. I know young people in Zimbabwe, most of people, they do not understand. Why are we talking about peaceful, uh, democratic elections in Zimbabwe? And yet we are being controlled by a, a military deep state. How are you going to get uh, rid of that? You talk of uh, uh, workers and you even explained that, you know, we do not have uh, industries in the country. So if you are going to use uh, labor, withdraw labor, use labor to strategy uh, to pressurize government for change, it will not uh, be affected that much because most of the, we got more than 90% of unemployment in the country. So uh, uh, yes, you also uh, talked about hijacking. The struggle was hijacked the um, 1999, yes, the labor came and they formed the, the movement and unfortunately it was hijacked again uh, by other systems, uh, by other kind of politics. <coughs> I don't want to dwell on that, in the, the formation of the MDC, how it was hijacked. Uh, but I think we should also understand that it was not on the labor that was part of the formation of that uh, uh, movement, political party. 
they were all other stakeholders were part of that. They were, of course, faith-based organizations. They were, of course, the, the civil society. They were academics. Uh, and all the descending people who, the descending voices came together. So, yes, uh, the influence came from workers. Uh, we know MT was part of the workers, was leader of the workers uh, with the Gibson Svanda, the leaders of the workers, yes. And the, the influence was driven from the workers, that I agree, admit. Uh, but uh, it was hijacked. Uh, I, uh, I do not fully agree with you <coughs> uh, because the interests of workers were not only at, uh, at their workplaces, their wages and salaries only. There was also a political factor. They wanted freedom. They wanted the issue of rights. They wanted... Uh, they, 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 a development, economic development. <clears throat> so workers were not only uh, uh, in, the, in, in the workers' place only. But yes, uh, uh, let me fast forward quickly to how the, the you mentioned about the, the Zinash hijacking the triple C. <laughs> we may have a lot of uh, people with the background of Zinash uh, who are in leadership. But uh, it's not very correct that we were hijacked by Zinas. It's just that uh, a lot of young people came from uh, universities, and those in universities um, were there was this organization of students called Zinas, and they passed through there, and they acquired a lot of knowledge, and they became more conscious of what is happening in their country, and they decided to participate. But it's not like by design that they were uh, to come to hijack uh, the Triple C. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't mention that the, 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 the fact that tri Triple C, uh, you didn't mention the background of Triple C in terms of labor, uh, because your emphasis is on workers. <coughs> because when Triple C was formed, uh, there was virtually no industry at all, literally no industry for workers. Uh, but I want also to say that uh, Triple C has uh, very few months after its formation. And uh, for a movement, for a political party to achieve uh, uh, that overall presidential 44% under flawed process and uh, in a short period of time like that, uh, they, they deserve to be, I think they deserve to be supported and encouraged. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Patriot, the Patriot, the reason why I, I deliberately omitted the, the, the name of our advocate, Nelson Chamisa, as the leader of Triple C, uh, avoided mentioning it more times, is that uh, there is a growing there was a growing perception that uh, we are bootlickers. The people who support uh, Chamisa, they are bootlickers. They can't change. He's surrounded by people who can't advise him correctly, who can't differ with him, who can't argue against whatever he says. It's not true. We've said many. I've said many times with Chamisa, argued against him. Some of his and sometimes. It's not his word that is final. It's not true that Chamisa is uh, he, he, li he likes to dictate. He, of course, he is, he is the president. He was the, our presidential candidate. Is the leader of, 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 of a champion uh, of citizen coalition for change. So uh, yes. Uh, this time I'm mentioning him now, <laughs> so, he's, but I'm not a bootlegger. <laughs> I differ with him in, in, in many issues. Uh, but as a party, when we come together, uh, we have to support our, our, our striker, we have to, 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 to support uh, our men in the front. Uh, on the same uh, deep state issue, 
uh, oh, okay, let me jump that and, and, and go to recalls the issue of structures and uh, recalls how they came about. The, uh, who is Sengezo Shabangu? Shabangu. He, we will understand that uh, uh, the person uh, uh, Shabangu was one of the members of the MDC before. He was our, when we, uh, he was the chairperson of Mat North in the MDC. And the, you know what happened also when people like Ndaibiti moved out from uh, Tsangrai, from the MDC and formed his own PDP. Shabangu was one of the uh, people, uh, was one of his team, one of his people. So when we formed Triple uh, C, Shabangu and other people, the PDP of course, um, uh, there was no talk of, win, of, uh, of the PDP. So members of the PDP, uh, members of uh, MTCN, uh, members of other political formations, they decided to <coughs> to rally behind or to support the Triple C. As like any other majority, and any other person who is not a, a, a Triple C member. And so you don't be surprised when you see people wearing triple C at the rallies. They are just supporters, most of them. We don't have a database where uh, Sengezo Shabangu is uh, Shabangu is a, is a member of triple C. We don't have a position of the SG in the triple C. So uh, what happened is that ZAN PF was looking for a loophole uh, because our strategic ambiguity had caused uh, nightmares for them. And I can tell you that if you had disclosed all our structures, we could be having more many uh, court cases today than we have today. We could have been having more than, more than 10 court cases arising from the constitution, <coughs> arising from those uh, from, from those structures. But we realized that uh, we, 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 once beaten, twice shy, we realized what happened to us when we, um, we were in the MDC alliance, uh, we, we know. So Shabango came out, uh, decided, in fact, through the influence of other people, may, maybe uh, with some uh, elements from within us uh, and the issues of power are hungry uh, maybe with the influence I, I don't know but what I know is that Shawangu uh, was influenced was influenced also by ZANPF ZANPF wanted something to do to, to, to get rid of M, uh, the M, uh, MPs, our MPs, and also to reduce our number in parliament uh, so that they can create that two thirds majority to change even the constitution and if, perhaps even to extend the ED's term in office. So, that issue of uh, um, the imposter, Shabang, we do not. Uh, think that a normal uh, member of parliament, a normal leader of parliament, the speaker of parliament, under normal circumstances who do actually rely on the letter written by someone like that. I think it, uh, as we understand it, uh, ZANPF does not care about the law, does not care when they want something to achieve something, they don't care. That's why even these uh, courts they can defy them anytime. So it was a matter of illegalities, as uh, Agom Tambara also alluded, that uh, ZANU-PF, the, uh, they, they acted on illegalities. They knew very well that that letter is just a piece of letter which has no meaning, and the, the, the Triple C on the, on the 11th of September had written a letter to the Parliament, to the Speaker of Parliament, informing him uh, them, the channels of communication, the address, 
everything is there what if they want to communicate to the triple c how uh, regarding its members in parliament how they would uh, uh, approach us but unfortunately they decided to ignore that and use uh, an impost I, I think some of you you will have heard that the very same uh, Sengezo is now a spokesperson is uh, uh, called the Pugen. Kalpan Pugen claimed to be the spokesperson of Sekeso. And he, uh, most of you, you would know where Kalpan Pugen comes from. He is uh, Mr. Monzora's party, is an MTCT member. Recently, before the dissolution of the, uh, the parliament, he was a senator under Monzora. Now, all of a sudden, now he is the spokesperson of the Triple C. Because if he claimed to be Senator Zengezo's uh, uh, spokesperson, uh, Zengezo, by uh, claiming to be the Triple C SG, so he is, by extension, he is claiming to be a member of Triple C, uh, and we don't have such. Now, we understand the push and the pressure for the Triple C to have a Congress. We allude to that, I admit we need uh, some form of uh, leadership uh, uh, arrangement through a Congress, but we, are, we do not want to be forced to do that. We do not want to be forced by, uh, by, by ZANU-PF to do that. You know, if you do, uh, check the time frames from the time when we lost, uh, when we formed the party, we were towards elections. When, even when we talk under uh, MDC alliance, when Swangirai went, uh, I mean, passed on, we were left with six months to prepare for elections. So we all know that through dialogue, through engagement, through consultations, it became very difficult for us to go for, for, for a Congress because obviously one would use, uh, besides the use of uh, the use of resources, the funding part of it, which we needed it for election campaign, we had also uh, factored in the issue of ZANPF infiltrating us, dividing us, and buying even our members to make sure that our members, uh, you know, with money you can influence. Uh, uh, any result so that we were very careful leadership was very careful from the time under MDC and MDC Alliance and even from the time under uh, Triple C that the time even now you can see why the rush why was the rush for, for, for ZANPF uh, through its um, tender to make all those recalls they knew if we would allow these people to go for six months, a breathing space for a year, the Triple C would even uh, come up with uh, con disclose and uh, I mean with Congress structures or something leadership ele election uh, of leadership, and that would be very difficult. Uh, let's operate. Let's work on them now. Of course, the other issue perhaps is that uh, since we are, uh, there is likely to be a SADC summit. Uh, this month or so, the outcome uh, may not favor ZANPF. So it's better for them to dismantle uh, the opposition right now, to work hard and make sure that the one they reduce them from parliament and uh, uh, even that will also uh, affect the, to reduce the, the, the issue of Finance Act uh, fund that uh, is likely to, uh, to, be, to benefit the triple C, the opposition as well. So with those kind of factors, uh, ZANPF would not stand uh, or wait there to make sure that uh, they fulfill their game plan. They, uh, they fulfill that. Uh, coming back to the very sensitive issue of uh, sanctions, uh, Patriot, <coughs> uh, program director, the sanctions uh, issue, we should understand that right now they are puppets of dictatorship in Africa, especially in Sati, especially Zimbabwe. 
and those puppets and the, the, the uh, there's one guy there's one guy who is very uh, influential in our in the social media he formed what he called anti sanctions and the in that anti sanctions the narrative there is to uh, prop or to push the propaganda against the triple c that triple c uh, through uh, its leadership you know before we became triple c there was Cham chamisa uh, went to push for sanctions uh, against Zimbabwe so that kind of a party should not be allowed uh, such a leader will lead such a party should not be allowed to lead Zimbabwe at all costs uh, even demo by democratic means he should not be allowed uh, uh, this is a narrative being pushed by uh, Rutendo Matinyare one of the guys the anti is the anti sanctions chairperson I think is based in South Africa and the, uh, we know that there are other puppets, uh, also establishments, uh, as, uh, even FAS, also working on that. Uh, it's a shame that the people, they do, not want to, they do not want to accept that Triple C is a new kid on the block. We have new ideas, we have new uh, ways of thinking. Uh, we have a new approach and uh, we are not yet hijacked <laughs> we are still <laughs> the triple c that stands for the rights of uh, uh, workers for the rights of citizens for the rights of the majority in the country and uh, as such uh, on the issues of sanctions it was not our baby I, I know they keep on dragging it and pushing it to us it's not our baby we do not want sanctions in our country we do not want sanctions in zimbabwe but uh, you remember sanctions uh, the reason that you have put forward uh, which led to the sanction to this data is the issue of drc the issue of drc uh, it is ZANPF that created sanctions by going to DRC, if at all the issue of Rwanda uh, being sponsored by the West, by America, and they had interest in the DRC, they were now uh, two competing forces uh, uh, over the, the, the resources, uh, the mineral resources in, in DRC. That issue then it's, it boils down to the issue of uh, uh, human rights again. We cannot just dismiss them because it's whose rights, who had the, the, the proper ownership right to, to, to those resources. The people of DRC, what did Mugabe want there? You know, so we can also say that it was not the opposition, if at all you base your argument on the issue of DRC resources, resources. But of course, the issue of the land, because you also talk about the land to say, uh, even though you did, not, uh, you did not emphasize, but it's a public knowledge that uh, some analysts always say the land, the issue that raised, that led to the sanctions from the West was because of the land. Perhaps it's, quite, it's also important for me to remind uh, Comrade Mabena that you, uh, when you were part of the, the leader of the MDC, you were one of the people who said that uh, the land issue uh, was uh, the agenda of the MDC, which was then hijacked by ZANPF. So it would be very unfair for us to say uh, the, I mean, the, the ZANPF was the, uh, the, the main uh, advocate of land. The land is a motive issue, we understand it through Africa. When everyone, even in South Africa, when you talk of the land, everyone opens their eyes and wants to know what is happening here. We all fought for the land, the liberation struggles were fought on the basis of land, and uh, I agree with you, uh, Patriot, on that one, that we were fighting for the land. But it's not true that we, uh, the MDC, were 
just puppets of the West and by extension even the Triple C uh, always labeled and dented as, as the puppets of the West. It's not very true. When it comes to land, our policy, our blueprint is very clear. Uh, we will not reverse the land uh, that is already in the hands of the black people in Zimbabwe. We will actually try to audit to say those who have more farms must share those farms with uh, the majority of we still have a lot of zimbabweans who have no land even to date the land is concentrated in the hands of the few uh, the elite who are part of this military deep state so the question probably is where how is the way what is the way forward uh, i still want to pose the same question to comrade mabena <laughs> What is the way forward to get out of this military deep state? Surely it can't be just negotiations. You are saying elections, peaceful democratic elections cannot be uh, the solution. You are saying the, the, the elections, uh, they failed the people of Zimbabwe. That's very correct. But for you to say we just want to conscientize people uh, all our people um, about mass, uh, mass you, I, I forgot the, the real words that you used, but you talked about conscientizing um, the people massively, uh, perhaps about development, uh, you are saying that uh, the transitional uh, authority cannot be the solution <coughs> to Zimbabwe. Uh, but if you talk about the, the transitional, uh, it, you sound as if you are saying the transitional authority uh, on its own must be a solution to our economic uh, problems in the country. And uh, you are saying, no, we must first be build the economy. How do we build the economy uh, under such uh, a military uh, state, under such uh, undemocratic uh, leadership, uh, under such a, a situation uh, where you have uh, uh, no uh, free and fair elections, how do you expect to develop the state? How do you expect those people whom you conscientize to develop the, the state and take power and negotiate and take power? Really, when you still have the, 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 the power still um, uh, uh, controlled or led by this... Uh, uh, the military deep state leadership. I still want to find out uh, how best can we move forward and do without elections, uh, without peaceful elections. Yes, you, t you factored in the issue of reforms. This is where I say reforms can be dealt with within that trans transitional authority government, if at all it happens. And within that government, we are not saying it is going to be the issue of the triple C and the government and, 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 and ZAN alone. Factoring in the theory of Ibo Mandaza, we would say, we would accept that uh, we have, for example, 10 or uh, people from ZAN PF, 10 people from triple uh, C, 10 people from civil society, maybe 10 people from your party, the, the Zimbabwe Communist Party as well, and come and let's work together and let's negotiate reforms. First of all, our, 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 our immediate call will be to, re, to dissolve or disband ZEC. When we disband BEZEC and constitute ZEC uh, with people from uh, different parties, that cannot happen when ZANPF is, uh, is, is in power, uh, when the, uh, the power is still uh, uh, kept as it is today. But it can only happen under a certain uh, authority that we call transitional authority. GNU, we, can, we, don't want to, 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 we don't buy into GNU so much. Because GNU, like you've already indicated, GNU will come with an issue. They will come with a defined uh, with a package of what they want and put it to you and say, no, we don't want anyone from op on security issues we don't touch. Police is ours, prisons is ours, uh, 
the arm is ours. So obviously the deep state is controlled by the security apparatus. We cannot dispense on them. It's a very sensitive area in GNU. It's and you, that is, they've already put, you know, graded themselves, they already uh, put a cabinet, they've already assumed the uh, majority in parliament. So obviously they know that by the time we negotiate in the GNU, they will be controlling all the state institutions. They know which one to give uh, away, the same way Robin Gabe did uh, during the GNU, uh, the previous GNU, where we're given economic ministries and for sure, uh, as, as labeled as Western puppets, who, the opposition was meant to, to appease the, the, their puppet, their, their masters to come and invest in the country. But we want to, uh, to run away from that kind of approach this time. To say, if at all, uh, the pronouncement by the region will favor the opposition, in terms of uh, the sad summit, what the outcome, what has happened, we will pressure and push. Of course, our first call is that of free and fair, fresh elections, which uh, sound like uh, an impossible thing, but uh, it, it is possible. It happened, uh, I think it's in Malawi, uh, it happened in other countries as well. So in Sadiq, which we normally say is the toothless dog, uh, if Sadiq wants to save face uh, from the region, from the international community, uh, they must come out with something tangible. There is a question on, unfortunately, I think it's Unlov who had uh, uh, talked about political resistance to say uh, there's not much resistance from uh, uh, from the opposition and, uh, and the, for the case in point is that we are not doing enough for the release of political prisoners like uh, a job scholar and Karif Fume and others. Yes, it's raising a, it's raising a very critical point. Uh, it is never be enough that we can't say it's enough until the men, the, those people are out. It can only be enough when the people are out. So our, uh, our campaign, uh, given the political landscape in Zimbabwe, it's even difficult for us to put people in the streets. Uh, you put people, people could die. You put people, you create a, a way of uh, them be uh, increase, a way of increasing political prisoners. Because the moment uh, they do that, of course, it's one of the uh, the methods that we will use, it's enshrined in the constitution that we must uh, protest. We have uh, lobbed for the freedom of job scholar in the international uh, community, in the international forums. We are lobbying for, for, for the freedom of job scholar and other freedom, freedom uh, uh, fighters uh, or political prisoners. And we are also saying that it's going to be one of the conditions, we have already stated, that one of the conditions for, in, for, for, for a dialogue is, in our dialogue, is that political prisoners must be released. And uh, we are also uh, saying in terms of disengagement, yes, I, uh, I think I didn't say much about that. In terms of disengagement, we are not resigning from parliament but we are disengaging just like staying away from work but only for for two weeks we have time frame it's not forever we want to within these two weeks to pressurize the government to pressurize them to, into uh, in engagement into a dialogue into a proper dialogue of course uh, we know that it's gonna it's not going to be easy but our dialogue also, we like we have approached uh, neutral people uh, in the, uh, who are leading our religions, religi religious leaders, like bishops. But we also approaching other international people, uh, the well well known international leaders to come. Of course, we also persuade the SADIC and AU to come and help us. I, we believe that there is still an opportunity for people of Zimbabwe to engage, negotiate, 
and, and, and come out with a framework that will create a free and fair elections that will push for reforms. You know, uh, the issue of voters role, the issue of ZEC, the issue of media, the issue of uh, intimidation. We, we, we need to address those issues uh, uh, in that forum, which will... Uh, uh, but uh, this question still stands, Mr. Mabena, my comrade Mabena, that how do we get out from the uh, military deep state it can't be just developing people and conscientizing people uh, uh, on development and uh, uh, arming the people. Uh, I think for now, let me say, uh, say thank you. Uh, if there are other questions, you remind me.